Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Unite Mics. We're finally covering more tournaments, baby. You didn't think you'd see any more of those videos on our channel, but we got you covered. And what do we have for you? A real treat. Of course, the first Chinese LAN event on the Chinese beta from China. Um, nobody else has really covered this. Zoinks, two official casters. Zoinks, dupe snacks. We're going to be knocking it down for you. We're going to cast this thing, and we're going to run you through the paces and some of the matches we were able to dig up. I'm going to break down some of the differences, and Zoinks will handle the harder, more statistically uh, oh, in-depth ones. We'll <laughs> say, he's the numbers guy, so he's going to oh, go into no. those. So this game, unlike what you're used to outside of the Chinese beta, it's not most points scored in 10 minutes. There is no timer. It's a timer that ticks up, and essentially it's the first team to 500 points. As you break goal zones, there is no overdunks calculated. So if there's 10 points left and you have 50 in pocket and you score, your character holds on to 40 AOS energy and the goal zone is gone. Essentially, the ultimate goal being to go all the way down uh, to the home goal zone and score 500 points. And also, we're back on remote stadium for this. So a smaller stadium that these teams are going to be rip roaring around the map and that's pretty important because there is a metric ton of objectives that populate and populate quickly zoinks talk to me about some of the old throwbacks we're going to see making yeah. a, their way back into people's faces and some of the new things that this chinese beta has sure yeah i mean if we're given a bit of retro to remote stadium it's also a bit of a remix uh there's some new walls some new tall grass to play around but also just like you said a metric ton of new spawns of wild Pokemon being added to the map. Most notably in Path, there, there seems to be these contests around these one-minute spawns of Rotom on both the top and bottom side. As soon as you knock it out, just like some of the quick modes that we've been experiencing in the global version, they walk towards the enemy goal zone, leaving it defenseless. Note, they do not score themselves. All they do is make the goal zone defenseless. Uh, two Registeels spawn on the bottom side of the map, about 30 seconds in. One Regirock on the top side. Those buffs are just to the Pokemon who does get the knockout between the teams. So it's fast and furious inside the stadium. In the middle points of the match, we have a bit of Avalug added to the game. And then at eight minutes, everybody's favorite is Zapdos returns to the map. As soon as you knock it out, it walks towards the home goal zone if it can. If it can't, it'll move towards the top side of the map. Shoots the goal zone, leaves it defenseless. As soon as one of those Zapdoses is knocked out, though, by the enemy team, or at least who is defending against it, another one will be spawning in just 15 seconds after that. So, as soon as we head into the late game and Zapdos starts coming to the map, they hit the map frequently. Yeah, it's almost as if that middle objective, once you secure it for your team, it helps you siege goal zones, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like Zapdos of yore, where all the goal zones just immediately become defenseless. Right. It tr it tracks towards it. Um, and I, you, you were breaking down to me that Avalug charges a goal zone, and if it actually hits, it puts in 80 points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It scores eight, similar to how Regieleki works in the global version. However, I was watching, no matter how much damage you do to Avalug, it does not reduce its score threshold. It'll always score score 80 as long as it gets to a goal zone so lots of interesting stuff dupes next we'll be getting into all of it as we jump in the game so let's cast the game yeah let's get into it so we're gonna kick off with it's 5 im we're gonna call them sim and chr across the way here we're gonna jump right into them getting ready for draft and zoinks uh if you're used to global version draft you're about to get a wake-up call Yeah, I completely agree. One ban on both sides. So at this stage of the beta, and just for a little peek behind the curtain for people, we're about two months out from this event happening. Uh, so the newest form of the Chinese beta might even be past this one. But that doesn't mean that their format is necessarily different. I think it still is that one ban meta. But Namoswine being first pick priority... If watching a lot of these games, Mamoswine actually sees a ton of play. You gotta remember, Remote Stadium into that central Zapdos pit only has that one big main corridor. Being able to stuff that up with a tank is very, very good. Yeah, they're gonna see that priority here. Uh, that Wigglytuff, we've watched quite a bit. Rollout Wiggly reigns supreme on this map. New <laughs> walls, and on this version, you can actually 
control the rollout so you can like bend it like Beckham and go around corners to pick up your targets. Yeah, I don't even know if you need walls, honestly, with new weekly <laughs> tough, right? Like, I mean, you do get the bounce and the knockup. It seems like you speed up a little bit when you do hit the walls. Actually, we should talk about that as these players are selecting their Pokemon in draft screen, which might be quite familiar to people who are familiar with the global version. One big change from the Chinese beta to the global version is that in the Chinese beta, you actually pre-select your moves before a match as well as their plus versions. So every move has two options for a plus version, which you select before the match begins usually they tend to be one is more of a damage focus option and one is more of a utility focus option um we're not experts in translating so we're not gonna be able to get all those moves right but it is interesting to see slightly different variations of late game forms of these pokemon yeah, and there's also two axes that these uh, teams can do, right? High heavy octane damage to siege goal zones that way. And of course, turtling up around it and using big defenders to be able to create space and insulate goal zones or to push towards a goal zone. So like Snorlax block has an opportunity to do a lot of work on this map, Zoinx. So yeah, extremely strong. And now we see the early central area being taken already. Ludicolo on both these sides being ripped out. I mean, like I said, it's old school remote stadium, but it is absolutely remixed. We did not even see Jigglypuff. We're just Wigglytuff immediately, Warpuddle yeah. immediately. I mean, we are moving. We already have a Regirock on the map. Larvitar's working through with this Snorlax. Heavy Slam Secure is always good. And now we have an old Poopy Tar. They're moving towards what? An Audinoz one. And at level four, we have Pupitar too. So notable difference already to yeah. see. However, it is cool to see that the nature of Pokemon Unite, at least a an aspect of it that makes it unique in the contest for last hits just stays throughout the entire matchup. You see, Wigglytuff already starting a bit of those rollouts as poor Mamoswine takes a bit of damage early. Yeah, quite a bit getting surfed and pushed through, able to eject out. But we're going straight back to the mix as Dreepy's trying to find their way around. They get KO'd by a Talonflame, and now Zork's moving in tandem. They're chasing down this Wigglytuff who has to eject away themselves. Talonflame getting a KO, but Cinderace and everybody getting bullied out. And guess what? Rotom hits the map, and Red Team, Red Team, wow, what am I saying? It's not that different, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> Orange Team was looking to move on that Rotom. If we rebrand a Red Team, I don't know if I'm going to keep <laughs> casting straight up. All right, Rotom <laughs> does get shredded through. As you can see, it will start to walk towards towards the enemy ghoul zone. One thing I have noticed, you gotta be quite close to these wild Pokemon to stop them from their path forward. Uh, it seems like a smaller AOE than on the live version that we're playing with now. But as you can see, if Rotom is knocked out, it does not go back the other direction. It instead waits to spawn in in the next minute timer. <laughs> Yeah, we already have a Tyranitar. Notice level six Tyranitar right there. <laughs> so no worries about scaling over here. We are working through with our fists. Heavy Slam chips up a couple, but nobody's really willing to follow up the Snorlax. It's right, everybody going there. Talonflame engages. Snorlax goes back in big block. Isolates Wigglytuff. They go down. And now we're turtling up around the goal zone is Purple. Sim looking for an opportunity. Is that a Dreadnought? What? <laughs> Captured by Tyranitar. Yeah, a two minutes Dreadnought does enter the map. It does the same effects as it did in the old school remote stadium. So she Shields for everybody and a bit of EXP for the whole squad. Oh, we're, we're, did you just see a Unite move pop, eh? Mm -hmm. Ro Rotom is about to hit the goal zone. It does. So this is a great opportunity. Finally, CHR gets on the board, goes for a score. And you can see that's, uh, that tier is 60 points max. And although they had more points in pocket, it still just locks down at 60. And that's mm -hmm. a little bit we were talking about. Overdunks don't exist. We have to rebrand the podcast. Zones. At home goal zone, you could still technically overdunk. <laughs> and I'm holding on to that for the rest of my life. Rotom does open up. You can see the team kind of all diving on no. this opportunity. What? but not a single score it is still tough to get that especially when a brave bird talon flame is on the other side tyranitar trying to retreat to defend their goal zone as you can see the momentum can shift so quickly and Zorark's making that happen just with their ability to cut through the opposing team are able to at least eat up that Cinderace and send the rest of Purple Packing here. And I don't know if you just noticed, there are bees back on this map as well. Nudo's worst enemy. We'll see if that makes a difference. We actually saw the Wigglytuff bend the bend the rollout there a little bit too, which to me gets me a little excited. Oh, they're cruising. And just so everybody is aware too, a Rotom will spawn kind of how the Vespaquin does or the Altarias now will move to the other side. Big Unite move engage. Garchomp working just the same as it always used to, and in the mix, a Dreadnought goes away. 
Yeah, of course, in a Hydro Typhoon, of course, why not? Wigglytuff, Dazzling Gleam on the run. Another big difference. We're looking to maybe uh, do a little action on Dragon Rush. Sorts out Snorlax. Wigglytuff's going to peel down. Mamoswine goes down in this whole exchange. And Garchomp's oh, absolutely in the blenders, the Dragapult. They're going to get KO'd the whole way. They force the Shedinja all, but Dazzling Gleam's going to sort them out. And that's just the strength of rollout now, Zoin. <laughs> it's good to see some things change, but some things stay the same. If you're <laughs> able to put them in the blender, the Wigglytuff will still get to operate. It is a good Pokemon to illustrate how many changes are in this version, though, because even while using Dazzling Gleam, you can see that Wigglytuff is actually able to be mobile. Zorark, though, does not seem to change too much with that feint attack, able to hit that Crawdunt, and got a ton of their resets available and hunt down this Talonflame. Actually using their Brave Bird just to go over the wall and get away from the Zorark because it is so impressive right now. Tyranitar going to move through. Zorark going to go straight onto the Regirock. Let's see if Tyranitar makes a move on the road and they try to go for a final secure. They can't. Now we're looking to push his purple. Roll that Wiggly just absolutely zipping around the map. <laughs> and now that just makes the whole team off to pivot. Orange is going to look to catch this thing. No, they're going to let it hit Zoinks. Yeah, Rotom will land. But again, you got to remember, Rotom itself does not score. So it's an opportunity to ambush just like this. Oh, man. I mean, Garchomp United straight into the Hydro Typhoon. You can see the speed at which these Unite moves come back. Zora pops it for a couple here. We've got a KO Streak of two for the Mamoswine looking pretty decent. Zork back the other way, though. Now we're isolating more targets. Roll out Wiggly Why not? <laughs> Coming straight in to chunk people up, and Snorlax makes it out. Just still unable to score his Sim. Yeah, not able to get any points on the board. And reminder, you can see those little thresholds on the top of your screen. Every 50, well, it's 50, 100, and then basically 100 points after that. So 200, 300, 400. You get team-wide bonuses that are specific to your Pokemon. Basically like a loadout build of buffs before you start the matchup that you want to hit those thresholds. So right now, CHR have one of those thresholds unlocked. Sim have none so far because of their points. Look at that jump pad where the old Dreadnought used to be. I'm pretty sure that just fires you into the ray pit from uh, like way side. down. Path. All the way to top path, actually. All the way to top side. Okay, so the ones in the grass or grass are what shoot you in the middle, right? The mm -hmm. other ones that springboard you over actually put you right in the ray pit. Now, a lot of differences to keep track of. Cinderace gets absolutely eviscerated. Of course, that's what Zorark does to that Pokemon. That's another thing that stays static. Popping a Unite move. We're looking for more targets. Mamoswine is low. High School Crash comes down. Nobody's home. Dazzling Gleam on the sprint. Just giving them all the looks and sends <laughs> Olive Orange scrambling. Yeah, another Rotom lends in topside, but here's another objective. So mm -hmm. Avalog, a giant tank holding 80 points of Aos energy, and we might not be able to overdump, but remember, those tier twos are able to absorb 120 points. Um, the 90 on the top side, 120 on the bottom side. So opportunities for Avalog to score a ton, and they break Whoa. it just in time for the tank to continue trooping. And just picking up a Registeel buff as well to make this push happen even more. Brave Bird jumps right in. Snorlax with a heavy slam. Big block trying to bide the time, trying to get the Avalog in. And I believe it actually hit Zoinks. It hit exactly, leaving that thing at 40. Oh, it's huge for them now, but the rally from the defense is strong. Wigglytuff able to ignore that Snorlax block and cruise right past them, hunting down this poor Zorark, but a bit too much mobility. Cinderace with an eject button will escape the Snorlaxes. Wow, I think both sides quite happy with the uh, amount of surviving members they have on the other side. Yeah, without a doubt, but meanwhile, that Tyranitar wasn't even in that Avalog push. Coming upstairs, going to get a Rotom, send that down the path, and now Orange can use that to play around to other sections of the map if they want to. Exactly. Now, Rotom is pushing in. It's actually a very common strategy we see a lot of these teams employ, is you grab one Rotom, you rotate to the other side, and try to grab the other, especially when Zapdos is on the map. Rotom stays spawning, so you can pressure with a Zapdos walking, a Rotom spawning, uh, all the electric types on the Eternal March, it seems. I mean, this Tyranitar running around at level 14. Talonflame getting a 50 on the backside, but CHR maintains the lead. We've got eight seconds until our next central objective. You just saw that Talonflame get zipped right into that pit in the middle. Snorlax is there to pick them up. One second, let's see what we get. Of course, it's the Zap Daddy, and they are <laughs> absolutely buckling that thing, which is going to go to the bottom path and help CHR siege. Yeah, if it gets within range as a short cast time, you can interrupt the Zapdos by doing damage to it while it's trying to shoot the enemy goal zone. But it's not an easy task to do when you have the whole five members of your team pushing Tyranitar on a bit of a back cap scenario. Surprised they're not going for the Rotom right now, but the rest of the squad is going to try to help the Zapdos. That'll have to be enough. That timer is not filled, so they don't land onto the goal zone. 
It is so low. Hydro Typhoon right on top of it, and they're still trying to chip them up. This Zapdos is on the verge of going down, but it still has a little bit of the tank. It's right there. It's lining up an attack on the goal zone, and it's peppering them in. It's closed out. The Zapdos is gone, but more points go in. 260 to 150. Now this Tyranitar back cap is going to go in, and they're on the chase for this Zorark, who's just trying to faint their way out of this one, and I can't believe they're going to get out of this, Zoinks. Yeah, they have so thankful they're doing so. You might be able to see it on the screen. The respawn timers in this version of the game, especially at this stage of the game, are extremely long. Oftentimes, 30 seconds plus. So if you get KO'd here, it gives the enemy an opportunity to swing in and knock out a Zapdos. Reminder, it spawns 15 seconds mm -hmm. after the previous one is knocked out. So you have to be always on the defensive or offensive or else you're giving the enemy a ton of room to work. Yeah, they're using all the objectives to, for their full potential here. Double Rotom pushes and then right into the middle. But they're actually sandbagging the Zapdos a little bit, seeing where the other team is to see if they can find a clear opportunity to go, go, go. Now... Is their move going to be made? That's what we have to wait for, Zoinks. Yeah, I mean, getting KOs, because of those high respawn timers, is even more valuable than actually having the objective on your side. Uh, basically, it would give you a whole new win condition. You're able to take them down to Rattatar with an eject Ooh. button, trying to sweep it away, and Talonflame somewhere on the map. You're not moving. Yeah, and, and Talonflame is uh, there just in time to get buckled because that Zapdos was taken again by CHR, not losing a single member of their team. A big heavy slam sorts out the third player there, Care Streak of two for that big Snorlax, and that Zapdos is taking the cheat code way in, and it's taking that goal zone in, and we're on the verge of a finishing move here. 400 points, 480. They got one more, and they get it. Bang! Look at that hollow. Look at that points go in, and that is CHR taking game one in uh, what is probably around 11 minutes. That timer... Mm -hmm. Just a little delayed on the start. <laughs> but hey, and overdunk at the end. 524 points. It still counts. There you go. There you go. <laughs> still counts. Still counts. Still counts. Look at that. I mean, that is non-stop action zoinks you have to imagine the communication when playing in this mode here on the chinese beta has to be like s tier mm -hmm. yeah traditional rotations are kind of out the window and you just have to constantly be moving around the map or else you're just going to get outpaced by the enemy team Zoinks. CHR taking game one right there in what was a pretty back and forth. It seemed around the first, you know, the Avalug mark is really where CHR kind of dug their heels and figured out how they wanted to approach this thing and leveraged the, the Snorlax, really. I mean, it looked so good in that front line. Um, what would you like to see? I mean... I, I, no supporters in sight besides this <laughs> Wigglytuff, right? Because it's got like the super kit of the rollout that can swerve all over the place like a hamster ball. Yeah. Um, what's something that maybe uh, Sim can do for themselves this game? Because it looked like they started off fine, but maybe... Uh, Stopped stressing objectives almost? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, if we want to see a swap up from Sim, I think there are some angles you could go in terms of the level scaling style of Pokemon. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they did have Dragapult, which on the other side, and a Garchomp and a Tyranitar to deal with. So clearly, uh, the winning side of the team had all of these late, what we consider to be late game monsters, what this version of the game designs are kind of early to mid game monsters. Right, um, right. It seems so. I think you just, you have to play into that a lot. There's so much experience on this map. You're hitting your power spikes extremely early in this format of the game. I think you have to favor that early power scaling a little bit better. Also, with how much mobility there is on this map in terms of jump pads that bring you all the way across the map, jump pads that lead you into the middle that uh, bounce you all the way to the other side of the Zapdos pit. It, it seems like powerful mages like Gardevoir and things like that are a little more at risk from some right. of these melee dominant Pokemon. So I think reverting a little bit to that melee side of things. And also, to be honest, we don't know all the Pokemon that are available <laughs> in this version That's of true. the game, right? That's so really I don't true. even know if they have the exact same roster. So making full draft swaps, I don't have the best of advice. So we'll have to leave it up to the roster of 5IM to really take it over. Yeah, Sim immediately locking in a Slowbro ban. It seems like it, that's pretty ubiquitous across mm -hmm. no matter what version of the game you're playing. If you don't want to have a player shut down, uh, you pick that thing up. And it must be an absolute mean machine on Sim on Greninja because they've also banned that. So I've watched a few of the games. I think admittedly, I don't think I've watched this game in particular, but the Greninja is unbelievably powerful. A lot of the players are going with the double team Surf style build so you kind of surround the enemy with your clones and then 
all attack with the execute move of Surf. It is, uh, I mean, it's a powerful assassin style of build. But we can see here CHR again going with that late game strategy. Zorart, Garchomp, a Tyranitar, but also taking away that Wigglytuff. Yeah, and the Wigglytuff was one of the best things going for Sim on their side. Mm -hmm. Um you know, making plays, obviously putting the Dragapult in a blender last game, which looked terrific. A Buzzwall selected Ooh. here and the Talonflame again, which Talonflame has, can do a great job getting around the map, especially with Brave Bird, yeah. uh, being able to get over those walls quickly. But this Blastoise, again, a space creator, right? Big time surfs, great for defending goal zones, but also great for pushing towards a goal zone mm -hmm. and leading your team in. Yeah, it's huge. If you have kind of that defender tank style spear point, you're going to be in a much better position other than just trying to walk straight up forward. You see here the Bouffalon still housing the red buff uh, on your side. You can try to take that. I have to imagine it does a very similar effect to what we've seen. And wow, I, I didn't think I'd feel so nostalgic about seeing Apoms in Path again. That's crazy. <laughs> I know, yeah, A palms and pass right next to Registeel, mm -hmm. where they should be, sure. of course. <laughs> Just going all over this Registeel, quickly secured here, trying to find out by who. I can't even see the bottom. Looks like the Talonflame picked up that buff, so it looks mm -hmm. like Purple was able to secure that for themselves. Red Jirox, the next one on the chopping block. Buzzwell getting blended a little bit here. Now they're putting the pressure on. Wigglytuff looks great. I'm excited to have Wigglytuff back in the mix. I'm not going to lie, Zoinks. I, this strafing, dazzlingly, might be the stuff of nightmares <laughs> for me to have to deal with but at least the rollout wiggly yeah you can see every time they hit a wall they slightly pick up in speed and get that slight barrier so clearly there is still shades of our version of wigglytuff as a part of this version but now they were a minute into the game those rotoms and all of the vespaquin combi spawns start to enter the map we often see a fight around mid at this moment but both these teams rather tepid in this game number two they get a vision on each other and then immediately rotate to at least one rotom yeah, this Rotom, though, is going to go in uncontested, it looks like. There's nobody really to stop it. Um, immediately hit the jump pad, Wigglytuff yeets <laughs> itself across the map to try and stop this Rotom from going in on the backside. Just showed up enough to see that the job was done, and now there's two playing down. Mamoswine's yeeting itself back the other way. <laughs> Yeah, jump pad's just good fun. I'm glad. Honestly, one of my favorite aspects of the game. I am happy that they are adding more. Yet another Registeel gets added to the lobby, and Zora going to pick that one up. Garchomp hitting their final evolution at level 6. Tyranitar right there, ready to go as well. Buzzle goes for the action on the Blastoise. Both players from CHR peel back. Maybe a good look. Zork up for the smoke, though. Okay, goes straight in. Buzzle's down immediately. A couple uh, Unites getting popped already, I think. Still trying to keep track of those. They think they get them at 7. Zork has theirs now, and they're all over this Dreadnought. It is secured, and quickly Talonflame goes in. Are they going to get KO'd? No, not this time around, Zoinks. There it is, Dreadnought, that slight burst of experience, but maybe more notably in this game mode, a higher bit of shielding. So that uh, the entire squad getting a slight shield as soon as that Dreadnought is KO'd. Dragapult and Snorlax, a pretty terrifying combination. Blastoise has got a Unite move to try to get, reject these enemies that are pushing into them. Garchomp, a little bit of help, but I think uh, that is an immediate retreat call, and I can't say I disagree with it. Meanwhile, that fight was breaking out. Great work by CHR in the top path. Able to close out their first tier one goal zone and get up that 60 to zero lead. Now they're kind of baiting around this Rotom to see if they can jump on the Dragapult. And they are absolutely able to. They are dusted. Half HP gone. Zorark Unite Pop Block is trying to stem this tide here. But no, the Strafing Dazzling Gleam is so unstoppable. Zoinks so popped up by a Heavy Slam. Oof. We're going right back in. Surf spacing. Now Garchomp has to peel back. But they get crash landed on by the Snorlax. Buzzwell pulls up for the smoke poaches a Blastoise for themselves, but the Rotom is secured, and it's flying in the face of purple. Let's see if Sim can deal with it. Yeah, it can hit that goal zone from kind of um, surprisingly far away, so you really have mm -hmm. to push into it and retroactively try to take it down, but it seems that the teams have their eyes on the bigger objective in the center of the map. This Dreadnought, Garchomp looks for some space, huge talent unite, but cut off by that Blastoise. Raybird right on top, though. We're going in for the action. The block is there. Garchomp keeps pushing forward. Another little heavy slam action. Buzzwell comes in. Four players down in a heartbeat. What just happened? Was that a Tyranitar Unite? No, they're still holding on to that, which means they just aced them without putting anything into the tank. And a Dreadnought is going to be taken right on the verge. Dazzling lean down. And now these points are definitely going in, Zoinks. 
Oh, it hurts to not see an overdunk, but that will be a clean break at 30. Zora gonna hold on to their 20 points. Another interesting thing that I'd love to talk about is that the bottom side of the map absolutely has more EXP. You can see that by the two Registeels spawning at the earlier part of the game, but the goal zones can also house more points in the bottom side. We have uh, that, I believe it was 80 on the top side, whereas the top side in the first goal zone is just at 60 points. So it'd be really interesting to see how the meta develops around that. If we have our hyperscalers on the bottom, Bottom side, and more of our early game stompers on the top side. It's going to be very interesting to see that develop. Well, we're looking at an early game stomp right now. You saw the Tyranitar and Blaster is able to bully out the Snorlax by all the time in the world for that Rotom to hit that tier two, and they close it out instantly. Zoinks 230 to zero. CHR is feeling it. And here, you can see on the bottom side of your screen, I love that they pull up this UI, by the way. You can see the Kaos and Assist, of course, but th you see how the Sim only has one of their score-based buffs unlocked. They get that at the beginning of the game, where CHR has three, thanks to getting oh. those three score thresholds throughout the match. Another neutral bullet session, putting them <laughs> in a the blender insane. is the wiggly top. <laughs> We're going straight in. Garchomp on the hunt, able to dodge the Dragapult attempt to stem them, and they peel back, but holy, CHR looks good. Yeah, they are playing this matchup extremely well. I mean, they're just stifling Sim at every turn. Look at this. They're pressuring the enemy Rotom. Even that safe EXP or that safe objective is no longer safe with CHR playing this far forward. Interesting to see the Registeel buff also moves, but this Garchomp, I think, has oh, been the man. main damage factor. I mean, we just saw another big Garchomp Unite able to get a couple KOs, and this Wigglytuff is fearless, right? Just charging at the other team. And this is going to be another Rotom taken with no contestion out of Sim because CHR takes it and moves forward with it. Talonflame is going to try and do something. That HP pool is way too low in the face of four. And now the rollout's going to chip them up just in time. Blast was in the action. Rotom hits. Another goal zone is gone. 400 point lead for CHR and they're knocking on the doorstep of a quick win here in game two. It finally feels like maybe Sim was able to try to turn a KO but there's just a lot of low HP and not a single knockout to their name. CHR have already made their way up to 400 points and Avalog is going to be walking all the way to the enemy goal zone. The score won't give them the game victory, but it will open up an opportunity. You see Tyranitar is currently holding 100 Aeos energy. I'm going to be so fully Hundo honest, no alive. idea how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so hundo burgers are still alive yeah we, we know that too so there we go we both got our stuff still moving into this chinese beta zoinks <laughs> and avalog is getting driving miss daisy escorted right in all of orange is around it mammoth swine nowhere to be found rollout is starting right into that dragapult who takes that up balloons to try and get back and now we have a tyranitar unite going straight in dragon rush as well hydro typhoon avalog hits and a score is followed right behind and that's a game win for chr all right, Wigglytuff puts in the points, and I believe, is that a shutout victory for CHR? Yes. A zero yes. to, I believe, 520 points. You see them popping off, and obviously well-deserved. The first champs that we've ever seen on our channel. Holy, this Chinese beta. What did we just watch? That was two kind of chaotic game zoinks and yeah. uh, i don't know if my brain is processed at all i don't know if as a support player i should be bummed or super <laughs> excited that i'll be picking it picking up the wiggly tough in that scenario um but it truly shows the differences how many mm -hmm. differences there are between the chinese beta and the global version and um I'm excited to cast more of these games, Zoinks. Yeah, I can't wait. It's so fun. It's very interesting to see basically a brand new look on one of my favorite games I've ever played. So, like you, excited to cast more of these games. I want to play this game. Hopefully, at some point, our version will match up with this version. Who knows? But if you want to see more of these games casted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll be uploading as many as we can here at YouTube.com slash Unite Mics. We'll see you for the next one.